Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, working as specialist in Marashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. In the previous presentation, I discussed non-neovascular age-related macular degeneration. In this presentation, I will discuss OCT's clinical applications in neovascular age-related macular degeneration, AMD. Although OCT angiography and fluorescein angiography are tools to diagnose the presence of neovascular AMD, OCT is a rapid non-neovascular method to diagnose neovascular AMD as well. OCT reveals important features that predict not only the type of the choroidal neovascularization CMV, but if it is active or non-active, and can predict visual prognosis. When OCT shows subretinal fluid, it is a sign of active CMV. It may have favorable visual prognosis when compared to intraretinal cystic changes, which may not always feature an active disease unless it is combined with increased macular thickness and hold poor visual prognosis. Intraretinal cysts are associated with disrupted external limiting membrane and ellipsoid zone, which in turn hold an independent factor of poor visual prognosis in the presence or absence of intraretinal cysts. Neovascular AMD is presented with the CMV in the form of pigment epithelial detachment or an subretinal hyperreflective amorphous material. CMV type 1, or what is called a cold CMV, will feature fibrovascular pigment epithelial detachment, PED, which has a regular RPE elevation with increased reflectivity of the Brooks membrane, forming a double layer sign. The PED content will be heterogeneous. In cases the CMV is active, OCT shows subretinal fluids or hemorrhages with disruption of the ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane. Often, there would be an increase in retinal thickness and intraretinal cystic formation. Sometimes, fibrovascular PED may have horizontal hyperreflective parallel lines, which indicate exudation from the fibrovascular CMV. OCT is a very useful tool to detect the location of the CMV as in this case uh, there is an active fibrovascular PED with a subretinal fluid all located non-centrally. Treatment naive quiescent uh, CMV features a fibrovascular PED that has a major axis in the horizontal plane with visible Brooks membrane without the presence of subretinal or intraretinal fluids or an increase in retinal thickening. However, treatment naive quiescent CMV can be combined with geographic atrophy or intermediate drusen. Classical or subretinal CMV presents RPE defect in which protrudes a subretinal hyperreflective amorphous material that contains a mixture of blood, fibrin, and neovascularization. Hyperreflective mass is associated with subretinal fluids or and blood with disrupted ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane, and sometimes it is associated with intraretinal cystic changes. In cases presented with a mix of fibrovascular PED and subretinal CMV will have the features of both entities such as subretinal hyperreflective amorphous material. PED which has a regular RPE elevation, the content of the PED will uh, be heterogeneous and with subretinal and intraretinal fluids and increased macular thickening. Retinal angiomatous proliferation CMV type 3 has three stages. It is better diagnosed with ICG, which in OCT appears as intraretinal hyperreflectivity due to intraretinal capillary neovascularization with increased retinal thickness in stage 1. In contrast, stage 2 shows hyperreflectivity at the level of outer retinal layers. Stage 3 appears as CMV anastomosis with intraretinal neovascularization. It has unique findings on OCT, which may feature PED with heterogeneous continent with a break in the RPE connecting the continent of RPE and hyperreflective material just anterior to PED with increased retinal thickness with subretinal fluids or and blood with interretinal cysts. Sometimes PED is associated with pre-choroidal cleft as an area of hyperreflective space between Brooks membrane and PED content and holds uh, uh, bad visual prognosis and increased risk of developing RPE tear. 
serous PED shows elevated RPE with a smooth or corrugated borders with clear fluids which give a homogeneous continent of the PED. In contrast, hemorrhagic PED contains blood and will show increased reflectivity below the elevated RPE, then hyporeflectivity due to signal block from the blood. Both serous and hemorrhagic CMP may present subretinal fluids when it is associated with an active CMV. Nevertheless, it may be combined with ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane disruption along with intraretinal cysts and increased retinal thickening. RPE tear in OCT appears as indent of the retina with increased hyperreflectivity in the area of contracted RPE with underlying shadowing hindering the choroidal view in contrast to the area where RPE was ripped off. Brooks membrane is visible with increased visibility of the underlying choroid. OCT is essential to follow up patient with CMV. It will show not only improvement in macular thickening, but regression of CMV as a reduction of PED size in cases of fibrovascular PED and regression of intraretinal and subretinal fluids. At the same time, OCD is very useful in monitoring the reactivation of CMV after successful treatment, such as the presence of subretinal fluids, increased macular thickening with or without intraretinal fluids, or other exudative changes along with changes in CMV sizes. As in this case of subretinal CMV type 2 showing subretinal fluids with subretinal uh, hyperreflective amorphous mass and increased retinal thickening with in intraretinal cystic changes, the next OCT cross section shows regressed subretinal hyperreflective amorphous material along with subretinal intraretinal fluids and macular thickening, indicating regressed and inactive CMV post three injections of VEGF blockade agents. And the third cross section shows subretinal fluids with an increased size of subretinal hyperreflective amorphous material and increased macular thickening, which indicates reactivation of subretinal CMV. OCT shows in cases of active new vascularization with discriform scar and existing subretinal scar with subretinal fluids. Please note how the subretinal fluid is forming an open angle, which indicates a sign of chronicity. However, these cases can be uh, with or without intraretinal cystic formation combined with increased retinal thickening along with a consolidated subretinal scar with the ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane disruption with or without outer retinal tubulation and some cases can be combined with fibrovascular PED or subretinal hyperreflective amorphous material. OCT can help determine if treatment is warranted especially in the there uh, are areas of central outer retinal integrity. Beneficial vision and status of the other eye. In contrast to this case where there is a total disruption of central ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane and best corrected visual accuracy is counting finger close face. At the same time, the other eye has only moderate AMD with 20-20 vision. OCD can reveal cases of new vascular AMD with vetromacular interface abnormalities, such in this case of active CMV with vetromacular traction. Choroid can be thick in cases of neovascular AMD acid with pachychoroid or thin in cases of advanced AMD. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. Please stay tuned to the next presentation where I will talk about the clinical applications of OCT in pachychoroid.